Good morning. Good morning. Sorry, a little tardy. My fault. I, I forgot my cord. <laughs> yeah, my computer guy wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. We had technical difficulties. I had one right here. Anyway, so it, it is another Monday. It is good to see you. We hope that um, you've had a, you've had a restful, restorative weekend, and that you're looking forward to a happy and productive week. I know we are. Yes, we are. And I hope everyone uh, have had some time to go and look at our Facebook Live that we did uh, Saturday night um, regarding sex and marriage. Yeah, it was good. It was fun. Yes, it was. Fun. It was fun. <laughs> it was so much fun. I talked about some things that made me blush. Thank goodness I'm dark and you can't really. I was I was blushing the whole time, but I've been blushing for 30 <laughs> years. At least once or twice a day. <laughs> okay, well, let's get to today. Um, I d did all the research by myself this week. <laughs> yeah, she did. And and, it's, and and that's all my fault for, for sure. And I could make up an excuse but I was really tired, <laughs> which is, is an excuse, but I was really tired. We had a busy weekend, and, and it yeah, it was all my fault, so I didn't push the issue of him helping me out. We Plus, we did the, the Saturday night, so... I did a lot he, on the Saturday night, didn't I? Yes, you did. Okay. I was, yeah, you did most of that, I, so... I thought I was still over half. in this thing. So, uh, we kind of had double work. And then um, we worked, he supported me on some house chores, so that I, with, I didn't push With my the shirt issue. off. <laughs> <laughs> it, wasn't that, it wasn't that big a deal. It wasn't that big a deal. Sexy. I just want to get... Men doing housework I just is didn't, sexy. I didn't want to get my shirt wet. <laughs> <laughs> I, did, I did. I did. I did. I, I did a little mopping. I did. Yes, you did. A little muffin. Because Saturday, um, he supported me in um, my walk with autism, walk, uh, Autism Speaks walk. And um, we celebrated a friend of mine's daughter. And and we it, it was our, my first year doing this. And we, uh, we really enjoyed it. It was exciting and fun. Tiring, but... Um, We've been practicing, well, not practicing, kind of training, yeah. walking. Uh, <laughs> I have been getting my steps in training, and um, I hit a, a ultimate goal this weekend that I've been trying to get to. Haven't reached the ten thousand steps a day, but I got very, very close. And those of you that are on Facebook with me, you saw my post of nine thousand some steps. That was really. Uh, awesome for me. I just, I, I have loved uh, speed walking and even running a little bit in, in prior years. And um, that's something that I've uh, fell in love with. And then I had an injury and been injured for what, about three years. I haven't been able to really get into walking and um, change my diet, reducing a lot of sugar, sugar, folks, it causes a lot of inflammation. So I reduced a lot of sugar and I have been able to walk again and, and, and losing, losing pounds and stuff that has helped me to be able to uh, strive a little more and get active again. Um, last year, most Saturdays, I stayed in bed or on the sofa because I was in pain, a lot of pain because of arthritis and, and inflammation, but uh, changing my, my eating habits. And, and no, I'm not losing weight it's real fast. It's not coming off real fast and I, I didn't put it on really fast. So, um, but cutting back on my sugars and walking, I've been walking for the last couple of weeks every single day. And Saturday was just an awesome accomplishment for me. So. And he supports me in everything that I do in this. We had, we had a good time. We were at, like Debbie said, we were at her, um, one of her coworkers has a daughter who's on the autism spectrum, and we went to um, the Autism Speaks 
uh, walk at at Raymond, James, at, at Raymond James Stadium, and the the goal was to was to walk three times around um, the stadium, and which I never really doubted that we would be able to do. Uh, but stadium, but a, a football it's stadium, huge. it's a big place. <laughs> you know, it, it's a big place. It wasn't three times around the track at your high school stadium. <laughs> I'm just telling you, it it, it, it wasn't. Uh, but um, it was, you know, what it, it was cool being there and 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 and, and seeing the excitement that um, that um, that family um, got from people coming out and supporting them and their, and their daughters. So uh, it was, and then my wife wanted to do it, and then it was so it was yes. Now I'm gonna tell you guys as we talk about this, I, and and my wife knows that I do a um, I. I contribute on a local radio program on Saturday morning at 10 o'clock, and I've been doing that for for a while. Uh, we've got over, I don't know, almost 80 shows done, almost 80 weeks. So it's been a long, long time. Um, and it's something I, that, that I normally do. But I would gladly, you know, like I said, I'd gladly uh, not do that for a week to be with her because she just thought this was important. Um, yes, my, my wife's a grown woman. She could have she could have driven over there by herself. Yes, uh, she's a grown woman. She didn't need me to drive her over there. She need me to drive her home. She would, she would have been just fine by herself. She's a grown woman, completely capable. But that wasn't the issue. The issue that is is that she wanted me to be there. So there, so I was so I was there, and I had sneakers on and I wore shorts outside, <laughs> which he doesn't do normally. <laughs> never do. I, many people who I've known for years have never seen my knees, and yes, we do live in Florida. So that's just how it is. So I wore sneakers and 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 put put some shorts on, and off we went. And we had a good time. And I was a little, I was, I'm gonna be honest with you, I was a little sore uh, when it was yes, all said and done. Were. You know, my <laughs> but my feet, my little hips were a little sore. My not so little hips were a little sore. Uh, but um, it was good. It was good. And um, we'll probably do do it again or something like that again. This time, you know what? Uh, next year there are. I think there may. This year there were two conflicting things that we might have done, mm-hmm. um, but if but if we can, uh, we'll probably do it again next year um, in support of that family. It's a great family, and um, we can support them. And if that's all we had, if that's all you had to do to support somebody. Yeah, it's not too bad. So you take a walk. Sound, sounds 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 as easy as it is, and, and raise money, and you can and you raise you can raise a few dollars to help help some families out through through some really tough times. And and by and by doing that, take a walk. No, no worries. Go ahead and do that. All right. So where where are we? Well, that's our topic for today. Is oh. supporting your spouse. Smooth transition. Yes. Nice job. <laughs> <laughs> supporting your spouse. And um, do you ever have times in your in your marriage or in your life? Period. Um, because as I always say, this show is not just about marriage. It's about relationships. And there are times within, it, even at work, when you're feeling really down and you feel like you're making all these mistakes and your name keeps coming up in the meetings and you're like, oh, what am I going to do? What do you need? You need somebody else at that time that believes in you and can encourage you and tell you, you got this, Willie. You got got this. I know you can do this. No matter what it looks like right now, we're going to make it through. And that's teamwork. Teamwork comes on your job. Teamwork comes in your your church. Teamwork comes in a marriage, in a friendship, period. It's always got to be. And, 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 and sometimes it moves back and forth yes. amongst the, you know, what. Uh, your friends and and, and stuff, and, and if you're blessed enough to have a best friend, not everybody has a best friend, um, but if you're blessed enough to have a have a best friend that you've worked with and done some stuff with over time, what you'll learn learn is that it moves back and forth. That that mantle of the encourager moves back and forth because we all, excuse me, my nose is, I don't know why that pollen, is. Uh, pollen, I don't know, hair, I don't know. Um, but it's you know what that mantle moves back and forth uh, of somebody who has to be the encur- who needs to be the encourager, who sees that that the other person in the relationship, whether it's a marriage, whether it's a boyfriend girlfriend thing, whether it's just a couple of friends uh, who work together, coworkers, whatever, um, needs a little needs a little foundational push, uh, needs a little encouragement, needs a little bit. I mean, sometimes we all need a little bit. It's going of it's going to be okay. 
Yeah. You've done it. You and, and and what I found in thirty years of marriage and um, having and 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 not only having my wife as my friend, but ha- having a a good friend outside our marriage is that there are there have been times in in both those relationships where we just both we all just needed. You've done this before. A lot of times we just don't we just we just forget. You forget. Mm-hmm. We forget when we're in the situation. You've done this before, or you've done more difficult stuff than this before. What are you even talking about? This is this is not the hardest thing you've done. This is not the hardest thing that you've been successful in. And sometimes we just need, we just need reminding that yes. sometimes, um, and and be re- and be willing and ready and, and, and at the ready to do that in your relationships because that's really important the the i think the office of the the office of the encourager is a really important thing part it's really important part of a relationship um now sometimes like that like the other week when we talked about you know family members abusing that or friends abusing that you you have to be careful in that because Supporting also means it could be financially, it could be uh, letting them live with you, it could be, you know, all of the things that come along with supporting someone, but there's a difference in supporting and being used. <laughs> yeah, you really have to um, use your your discernment. Uh, and sometimes, and this is when you have to, have to adult, is sometimes supporting somebody may not make not be giving them what they think they want at the time exactly that may actually be the real support um and especially if you've seen negative or or self-destructive behaviors again and again um and because people in your family especially um have given into the crying and the whining and and, and the person isn't benefiting from that so a, a more supportive stance may be may sometimes be no Mm-hmm. And I, and I, and I, and that could be and that, and that could be very very difficult. But a more supportive stance may end up being no. Um, Sometimes what you think you need um, to be support to to support you to help you is not really what you need. And you're in the issue, and the other person is on the outside, and they can see more clearly. Sometimes um, being supported is not the same thing as being comforted. Mm-hmm. And sometimes we just want the comfort. We just want the comfort, and I and that's a human thing. Um, but the support set, but the, the, the support may not be comfortable. The support may be difficult, um, and that's what you really need. But again, making sure that you always are are cognizant of when somebody in that relationship needs needs your support, and what kind of support that is. You know, and 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 and, and don't get cute thinking that you can say I'm supporting you. But I'm going to ignore you. I'm not. I'm not really going to give you anything that you need and say I'm supporting. I want you to be tough on your own because you know supporting somebody who's hungry is not telling them pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Stop whining. <laughs> I know you haven't eaten in six days. That's not support. That's not. That's just mean. That's just cheap mean. Yeah. Um. So you have to be. You have to be careful about what that support is, and you have to. And and, and especially in a relationship situation, you have to under. You have to know what support looks like. So where are you at? Um, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I know when I talk, I'm just so, so you're cap- so, you captivate just captivate me. You I know just all these my, words just come right out of my, my mind. Because <laughs> <laughs> I can do a run-on sentence better than anybody. Just keep going. No punctuation. Just keep going in one breath. Uh, anyway. <laughs> Just like that. But um, I I know that uh, sometimes we feel like we're stuck out in an island on, out there all by yourself. Even within a marriage, you can feel sometimes alone and that you, um, you know, that, well, he just doesn't get it, um, you know, and you just want to have a pity party for yourself. There are days you can do that. You know, we all can have pity parties and be in and in bed and stuff. And like I said, I've dealt with depression before, and my husband knows. You know, I've had those days when I just I don't want to be bothered. You just want to be by yourself and have your pity party. Well, a 
day or two of that is maybe okay, but he he hates it. I absolutely abhor it. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to be honest. I, I absolutely abhor it. Um, my my thought is that it doesn't get you anywhere closer to where you need to be, or you where you even where you even want to be. Do you want to be here? No. Then why are you here? Now, I'm not saying that I'm always encouraged and I'm always da, 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 look at me. Pretty much all the time. No, not hardly. <laughs> no, not not hardly. Um, yeah. Whenever he's quiet and he's sitting alone and things suck. Things I'm, suck sometimes. No it, doubt. It scares me. <laughs> things suck sometimes. I'm, and then I'm constantly saying, "Are you okay?" And I always go, "Yeah, I'm fine. I'm okay." Are you okay? I'm Are you okay? okay? I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. Thanks. No, I'm, no, I'm, no, I'm good. And that's more annoying. Than no, I'm, no, I'm, no, I'm good. But you know, because I, 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 I just want to move to the next thing. I just want to move. I just want to move to where I want to be, um, as opposed to being in that place. Uh, that's dark and not fun and stressful. I don't want to stay there. Um, I don't like it. It doesn't feel good. It's not a warm blanket to me. It's it's like sleeping in the gutter. And I'm like, no, we got to get out of here. You got to move forward out, out of this place uh, because it's not because it's not helpful. And I don't want to ever have that be normal, which is my. I don't ever want to have that be a normal thing that I like and feel and I want to wrap around like a warm blanket and because it isn't. It isn't. It's debilitating. And, and, and oftentimes it's debilitating to people. So. And it makes things worse a lot of times. Um, a lot of times when you uh, are depressed or are down and need that supportive thing and you continue to pack on that, oh, I'm this and I'm that and I'm... I'm fat and I'm ugly and I'm and this and, and I'm I don't ugly. do good at work. And I'm not, I'm I'm not. I'm I don't not, even know why they hired I'm me. I'm not smart and blah 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 blah. I'm blah, not blah. smart as the other people there, and you know all that wallowing in your it just makes it worse. It. I think I learned that lesson a long time ago. Little story. One of the cool things about being old is that you have stories. <laughs> I think one of the about old. That's why I don't try to push off being old because I like all the good stuff that comes with it. And Wisdom sto- and stories is one of them. Um, way back when, and when I was at Florida State University as a saxophone student, um, <clears throat> I was having some trouble in my private lessons with my teacher. Uh, I was having trouble getting stuff, um, and um, it got to a point where my teacher Pat me and um, who's training you know, up retired in Plant City, not far from here. Um, and we're going to talk this week. I um, said that, um, you know what, he noticed that, and I was feeling like, well, everybody in the studio is better than me. I'm on the bottom. And he, and, he, and, he, and, he, and he grabbed me, not physically by my neck, but he grabbed me by my neck and said this. He said, Willie, if you weren't supposed to be here, I guarantee you wouldn't be here. Now stop whining and get to work. And I use that in my studio. I teach that. I use that in my studio all the time with my students. I don't care where you are now because we're all at some place on the spectrum of where we were and where we're going to end up. And the, and the people who are doing the best are the people who are moving. Not the people who are flying by you at, at light speed. Yes. Not the people who are way ahead of you. I'm talking about the people who are doing best are the people who are moving. And if you're not moving, that's on you most of the time. So if you've got the power to move, move. Do what you can. And and that was an that was an important day for me. I think that was an important turn. I was a turning point in my life. Uh, move forward. If you weren't supposed to be here, you wouldn't. You are smarter. You know, and I, I don't I don't get into all, all all those those little things that make you say you're smart enough. You're good enough. <laughs> you know, but. The, <laughs> the fact of the matter is, they would. You're right. They wouldn't have hired you if you weren't. If, if, if they didn't think you could do the job. So of course you can, because somebody else who's smarter than you in that thought you could. You know what? So of course you can. So stop whining about. Well, I don't even know. Just do it. Make the adjustments you have to make and do it. Um, which is how. And sometimes that sort of athletic sort of approach to things doesn't always transfer to other people. Doesn't always transfer to my wife. 
So mm-hmm. I am I'm careful about that. I'm not always Bobby Bowden, you know. <laughs> Come on, let's go. Bum, 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 bum. Because uh, because it, it, it doesn't always work. I think you just have to sometimes be sensitive to where people are, where uh, they are in their walk, in their chapter in life, to where you can sort of use a sort sort of a thundering velvet hand, and 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 be ready for them when they are ready to move. So I think that that's sometimes important too when you're supporting somebody, guys, husbands, especially. And the funny thing is, is that I can do it for other people <laughs> and I can encourage other people when I was uh, supervising and managing and all that stuff. I can. Supervisory? I, that's a word. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like faster. I just made up a word. Never heard that. <laughs> <laughs> Supervisoring. When I was doing, when I was uh, doing that <laughs> in in work, and and then at home, I'm, uh, you know, I can encourage him. I can encourage my son, and um, but when it comes to myself, sometimes I have. To, it takes a long time to look in that mirror and say, "You can do this, Debbie." It's 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 that same self speak that I just sort of made fun of, but you have to be able to do that all. But you have to be able to do that all the time. You have to be able to look back at your own accomplishments sometimes and say, "Look what look what I've already done. Look what I've already done. Look where I am. Look where I look look where I started and look where I am." So mm-hmm. so it doesn't even make good sense to think that I'm not supposed to be here, let alone to the next level. It, it doesn't even make good sense. So what I need to do is. Like the song says, shake it off. Thank you. Um, but um, it's like when I got separated from Jocelyn's Learning Corporation. Remember that Thursday? Mm-hmm. Bad Thursday. Well. Bad Thursday for me. Bad. I remember it was a Thursday, and it happened a long time ago. That's how bad it was. I think I allowed myself a day to mourn. That Friday, mm-hmm. I was sad. I was so sad. I was sad, and I was terrified. Because uh, we had a little one, fairly new marriage, brand new baby. I was absolutely terrified, angry, scared, the whole nine. Uh, allowed myself a day to mourn, and then on Monday morning, put my clothes on, put a shirt and a tie on, went down there and got my unemployment because I paid into that insurance for a long time, and started knocking on doors. It was seven days, and I had a job at Radio Shack. And I cheated. Yes, I worked at Radio Shack. I had a job. Uh, I had unemployment. Well, I had unemployment. I had the severance package from Jocelyn. I did not care. <laughs> I did not care. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I so I understand. So sometimes sometimes we're in a situation where we just don't have the luxury of not shaking it off. And um, so like, like I said, I've been there. So I get it. Mm-hmm. I've been there. Uh, but what you gonna do? So sometimes you just have to self-speak that you can do it. Um, You're smart enough. There's nothing wrong with you. Um, You're okay. Uh, Your heart is still beating in your chest. Your your brain is still activated in your head. You're fine. So and you're you're going to live through this, and you're going to come out better on the other end. Yes. And sometimes that's tough. Hey, Jess. But um, being a, a supportive friend, being a supportive coworker, um, being a supportive boyfriend, girlfriend, um, being a supportive spouse is very important in the people in your your lives. Um, try to know the triggers. Try to know when you know when to shut up. That's something that I had, I had a problem with, you know, because I I tend to. <laughs> where I attend to be supportive and, and tell people good things about themselves, sometimes I can be negative and, and not know when to stop trying to, what am I trying to say, mold somebody or make them, make them be like me, you know. And in supporting someone that, that, that does a way, a part of, and we talk, and we talk about this all the time 
I mean, it's a constant theme in if, if you've watched more than one of our our, our, our live cast, um, is getting to know your partner. And if even if it's not a, 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 a husband, wife or a romantic partnership kind of deal, knowing who they are, knowing what encourages them, what depresses them, what frankly, what ticks them off, um, understanding the, the, the tone of what you're saying. There's a lot that goes, it's a lot that goes into, tone. That goes into the whole, am I encouraging you? Um, are you going to get that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Our, welcome to my house. Our, 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 our alarm panel is, it goes off every, every 12 hours or so for no apparent reason. Uh, so we working on that. Yeah, I think I think Alex is going to get an axe and just chop it out of the wall. We're going to come home, it's going to be a big hole in the wall, and that's going to be good. But um, so sometimes you have to, you, you really have to know um, your partner. You have to know your spouse. You have to know what encourages them. Um, you have to really understand them. And don't push the wrong buttons. Don't push your buttons because what happens, I think what happens is um, you see a situation and you always put yourself into that situation is you. And what you would do. Here's what I would do. And the other person's like, and I got a newsflash for you. That won't work for me. I'm not you and I'm not doing that. And then and, and then, he has said that to me several times. And then we have con- and then we have conflict. <laughs> um and, and if you are even even in the workspace, um if you are <clears throat> if you're counseling someone or if you're um their superior or whatever, you always have to have to look at or try to look at it from where they are, as opposed to from where you are. Yes. Because yes, you may have you may have that answer because you can see the larger picture, but you have to understand as you're talking to someone, understand they can't possibly see everything you see. They can't see the experiences that you've been through. They can't. They can only see what they can see. And the line from Driving Miss Daisy, how you how you know how I can see unless you can look look. Look through my eyes. How you know I can <laughs> see you unless you can see through my eyes. And that's a great line, and it wasn't meant for that, but it's the truth. Uh, I have to be able to, and I do this in my teaching, is understand where they are. So I don't approach a, a eighth grade clarinet player like I do a senior clarinet player. There's no way that the eighth grader who's been playing a year and a half can understand everything because they just don't have the same picture. Now, the person who's been playing for six years has a completely different vision of what things are. So you can approach them differently, encourage them differently, discipline them differently. Because you don't, because you don't discipline a two-year-old the same way you discipline an, eight, an eight-year-old. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you just don't. Uh, you, you don't tell the two-year-old, go over there and sit in that corner. What? <laughs> to a two-year-old? No, you don't. Uh, that might work for an eight-year-old. I don't think it works for anybody, but it might work for an eight-year-old. I don't know about eight-year-olds now. But, but it definitely isn't going to work for a two-year-old, and it is because of the two-year-old. It's not because of your experience. It's because of the two-year-old's experience. Mm-hmm. So, when you're do- so when you're talking or you're trying to encourage somebody, please try your best to look at it as see things as they're seeing things. And that's a tr- and I'm going to tell you, that's a trick. It's a trick, uh, but it's really important um, that you do that. Otherwise, you're going to actually you run the risk of discouraging people when you're trying to encourage them. Um, and that's why in in young marriages, when you're newly weds, you're not you're not going to know your spouse as well. You look at me and Willie, and you think, "Oh, how well would they have?" It's been. Oh, oh do you want to do what we've done? <laughs> over 30 years. You want to beat, you want to go through what we've gone through to get what we got. <laughs> <Do you? laughs> but it's not going to be that smooth and, you know, you're not going to know exactly what they're thinking and where they are and all that right away. It it takes time. It takes time to, to get to know each other and know the little quirks and little things and the little looks in the eyes and all this stuff. I mean, can look at each other while in church and and I know what he's thinking about 
and he knows what I'm thinking about. And we just laugh and people are like, what? <laughs> it's like nothing. Yeah, and 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 that and if you want that and you're willing to work that way, if, I mean, and, and you willing to, and you're willing to pay attention um, to your spouse that much, then that will come. I, I, I promise it. Um, you know, what if you talk to anybody who's been married any real length of time, um, they'll tell you that 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 wasn't the first day or the first year, no. um, but suddenly, suddenly it, was, it seemed like suddenly it was there. Um, and if you have if you have uh, marriages that are following good examples, they can tell you that that happening, um, that that's happening slowly as they get to know one another, because um, that's really important in supporting somebody. You have to you have you have to know who you're supporting and how to support them. Um, and we talk about this all the time when we're talking about work relationships. Um, <clears throat> you can treat if you're in charge of somebody, if you're in charge of a group of people, you can treat them all fairly but you can't treat them all, all the, same. the same i i used to it used to hurt <laughs> me when i had a supervisor early on and and she would say you know um i'll treat you fairly but i can't treat you the same and and it would i would be angry i'm like you need to treat everybody the same and, until i learned and then i became supervisor and i became a manager and then I, you learn you know you have to treat people to, the way, as he said, where they are in life. You know, you can't treat a, a, a senior teller the way you treat a brand new teller who's been here for two months. It doesn't work. And they learn differently. People are different. What? Yes. <laughs> People what? are different. We're not all cookie cutters? And you can be fair, but you can't treat them all the same. Yes. So... So that's that's really the. I mean, once you once you start learning that when you start talking about supporting people, um, that you can treat people fairly, but you can't necessarily treat them all the same. Um, you're going to find that learning how to support folks, especially in work relationships or friend relationships uh, or spousal relationships, is that's all the kind of stuff that you're going to have to be able to take on. Um, because I think you really do want to. I, I, I think it's. I think it's important that somebody in, in a group be the role of the encourager, take mm -hmm. on the role of the encourager, because that's how groups move forward. That's how that's how marriages move forward. Um, and it's sort of it's sort of like this. Let's, let's see if I can do my animation. I'm all set with my animation. So you have two people, and they're running down. Let's see. I'm do this on camera. They're running down the track, and then one person is feeling pretty good, and the other person is trailing. And then you know what happens? The person up front, which which finger is that? This one needs to move back and push that one along. Okay, and now we move together, and it, and it may switch. The other person pushes the other person along, but you have to know how. You have to want. First of all, you have to want to. Yes. Uh, if you're just looking for somebody to encourage you all the time, that's something you have to look into. Because some people are like that. Some people are. Some people are, will milk you dry. Just train your life. They think every other are. day is like I don't know if I can do this. Mm -hmm. uh, every day, <laughs> and they think that that you are a garbage garbage can, can with a hairy with lid. A hairy lid, and all their garbage is going into you. Don't let Thank somebody. You Somebody train you um, daily. I mean, they need to sometimes be the the stronger person in in that relationship. So if you have a friendship or or a marriage or you know a coworker that every day they come in, oh, oh I can't do this today, and you got to support them. Like, yes, you can. You got this. Blah 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 blah. blah. And then they, you know, and then the next day, oh. I hate this job. Blah, 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 blah. It's like, come on, you gotta have a good day someday. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's that's something else that you have to be careful about. You have to be be careful about the person who 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 seems to need that all the time. If that person, uh, they've got other stuff. Going, they've got other stuff going on that you mm -hmm. may not be able to simply by regular encouragement. You can't uh, deal with it. Helping them because if they're going to want to bring down the whole level of everything. Maybe they should seek help or maybe they're in the wrong environment. Or in the wrong <laughs> job. You know, maybe this job just ain't for you. If you can't find a spark in it every now and then, then maybe you should find something else to do. I worked in a middle I worked in a middle school and I will tell you that 
some days were fun. <laughs> there weren't many days. But there were some days that were fun. There were some days that you, you were like, oh, that worked out well, uh, which is why I left with high school. But anyway, even that, even, even then, um, uh, and and I, I remember there there were people who would come into the TPA every day, like they had been through hell every day. I'm like, well, maybe you're doing this wrong. <laughs> maybe if it's this bad for you, maybe you're doing it wrong. And it's the same thing in marriage. You know, people who who, who whine, who come to you and whine, whine at you about their marriage all the time, uh, all the time. Maybe they're doing, you know, maybe you're doing it wrong. Doing it wrong, maybe, yeah. Maybe it isn't and it's them. their third marriage. Maybe it isn't them. Maybe it's you. Maybe you're doing this wrong. Uh, <laughs> which is sometimes tough when you have to be sort of in that manner. Uh, but, yeah, if someone, if someone needs that all the time every day, then maybe you're not going to be the one to consistently encourage them. Every every day because it does get tiring and it does get um, draining and it does get frustrating if they don't seem to um, be take and and the thing is if you're encouraging them they're not really really not taking you at your word they're really not believing what mm-hmm. you say if you say they're not listening you're gonna be okay you're fine you got everything you got everything handled they're not they don't believe you if they need it every day if they need it all the time you're saying it but they're not believing you um, so. Maybe you're not either saying it right, or you're not the one. You're not the one to say it. So they need some counseling. Support is really important, um, and I know, and I, I, and 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 I, and I've got some. You know what? And I think we both have some really good examples of people who are in marriages that um, things don't always go as planned, mm-hmm. and um, the spouse has been extremely supportive in in in, in people's work lives and people's health situations. Um, so we've got some great examples and we've been blessed with some great examples to go by. Not that we're looking to be around people who are struggling and, but that's not it. But we're looking for, we're looking to be around people who are succeeding despite the struggle. Mm -hmm. Um, so hopefully we can be those people for you. Um, not that every day is Nirvana. Um, there are, there are days of struggle. There are days that aren't. We're not perfect. There are days that aren't as much fun for all sorts of reasons as as others, um, but um, hopefully we can encourage you guys to continue to support one to support one another as you move through your journey. Um, I know that's sort of a <sighs> sort of a YouTube euphemism. Follow me on my journey. Where are you going? <laughs> I don't know if I want. I don't know. If I don't know if I want to follow you. you. What about watch you from over here? Oh, you're going over there. No, I'll just stay right here. Um, yeah, we can close some time. Oh, okay. Here. All right, then we're gonna go, we're gonna get out. Get, time get flies here. when you're having fun. When you're having a good time. So, any in, 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 in any case, uh, make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel. Um, go to YouTube and search for Real Talk with Devin Will, and um, subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell because if you if you just subscribe, you won't get the notification. When we go live, so or when I upload this video to YouTube, so we all, mm-hmm. we've uploaded all the Facebook videos to YouTube. So you want to make sure that you click the notification bell um, and go to the website, Real Talk Show US, and you can sign up there, and you can see some of the some of the some of the shows we've already done there, and you can see the blog. There's a blog, yes, there is a blog, uh, and there's some articles in it. So you want to check that out. Uh, you can um, email us your questions here at, here on here under the thing here uh, here on Facebook and on YouTube. If you've got questions, and we'll go, we'll, we'll go through that and and try to pull those out and um, address them in future programs. Let's see what else what else could they do. So there you go, there you go. Tell your friends. Yes. Oops. Oh, I don't know. Share Let's, this video. The stream went crazy for a second. As much as possible and um, help your friends. All right. So well, until we see you again, go out there and learn something, love somebody, and for goodness sake. Love sakes. you guys. Y'all take care of yourself. Peace. Peace. Yeah. I came loose. Yeah.